Hello my friends, I am Sarah. Welcome to Grace in My Space. Today we are diving deep into creating a custom organized kitchen without the custom. so much to everybody who showed me love and congratulations and were so kind on our kitchen reveal video which I will pop up for you here if you missed it. Eight months in the making, eight months to a completed kitchen renovation that was much larger than just the kitchen but it's what I'm counting as the kitchen renovation and you guys were so wonderfully kind and very grateful for this community and your support and encouragement over these last eight months. It's kind of crazy to think that it's been that long. But today, I wanna to dive into some of your questions and I want to talk about how I created a custom organized kitchen without doing it in a custom way. Obviously, this kitchen is a custom kitchen. Our cabinets were custom made to our dimensions and our specifications, but from an organizational standpoint, I did not pay anything extra to have it customized by the cabinet maker. I'm doing it all after the fact, after factory, and doing it myself. And so today I'm gonna walk you through, hopefully, what'll be helpful to you if you wanna also implement some of these organizational things into your own kitchens. First things first, I had some people concerned that there was a lack of plants in my kitchen. If you remember my last house, I had plants everywhere. Look. Are you happy now? In all seriousness, plants were always in the plan, but when we moved and during eight months of construction, a lot of my indoor plants did not weather very well. One of my favorite plants got stuck into a dark bathroom when our basement flooded and I forgot about it for five months and I it's, it's cut back to nothing. She's just a little stub now, so I gotta rebuild my plants. Let's start in the pantry. This is our pantry, it holds all of our food, except for a couple of overflow items, some canned goods, things like that, that I have another cabinet for. But for the most part, everyday goods are in here. But first, we need to address something. The fridge. I have had many people comment about why we did not do a panel ready fridge, which is basically just a fridge that looks integrated into your cabinetry, and instead we did a regular old fridge. Some people even said that it was a pity. It was a pity that I have this fridge. <laughs> Come on guys, if this kitchen is a world in which I should be pitied, then I do not want to live in that world. The reason that we did not do a panel ready fridge is simply because typically they are much more expensive, they are much less storage because they're more counter depth, and if you ever need to replace it, which let's be honest, appliances these days just do not last, they do not last, it's really expensive to replace it in the future because you're stuck to those very specific dimensions and then you may even have to rebuild your panels that are on the face of it. So that is the simple reason why I didn't do a panel ready fridge. Plus, I think she looks darn good. So that's my simple answer. Everybody's tastes are different. Everybody's budgets are different. There are places you just have to cut sometimes, especially in this big of a renovation. The fridge was a no brainer for me. Now let's look at some pantry organization. These cabinets are 20 inches deep. It is not the standard depth for cabinetry. It's also not really a shallow depth for pantries. In our last house, our pantry was 15 inches deep and it was, in my opinion, perfect. 15 inches allowed me to have stationary shelves and I could see everything, nothing got lost in the back. It was a little less storage, but for me and our family size, it didn't matter. This one, I decided to go with 20 inch depth because of them being directly next to the fridge. I didn't want that big gap in depth and also because of this beautiful corner over here. Now, what that did is it created another five inches of depth than what I was used to. And so I decided to go with stationary shelves in this pantry. 
20 inches is fairly deep for stationary shelves. And I didn't really realize this was one of the small regrets. It's really not a big deal, but small regrets. I didn't realize how much five inches can make you lose food in the back of a cabinet. So if I were to do it again, maybe I would customize it to have rollout shelves in this lower portion. Obviously not up here because rollout shelves up above your head make zero sense whatsoever. But here's what I'm doing to create the customization of rollout shelves without paying for it. Now for pantry staples, I am all about decanting and taking items out of their original packaging as much as possible, putting them into clear glass jars. If you have the pretty labels, pop them on. Otherwise you can see what it is. Still granola. I love, love, love these labels. It came in a very large pack. I will link them in the description. And this just is an easy way to see exactly how much you have of your stock so you know when you need to refill and replenish. And I like to also use vintage items like this for a simple thing like breads. Oh look, there's some onions in there. Good to know. Now these bins are my favorite. Obviously I need to replenish this one but they are huge, they hold a ton, and they're extremely sturdy. So if you have stationary shelves like I do, getting these types of containers is a game changer for accessibility so that nothing gets lost in the recesses of your pantry. I'm also a big fan of cereal containers. You can see exactly how much you have. You can use this for anything. I just use them for cereal. And then also for your baked goods. Now these canisters are an extremely good value. It comes in a set of four. I think that the math worked out to like four or $5 per container, but they are really large and they hold a ton. So this is what I primarily use. As you can see, they hold a ton, they're sturdy. These are canned goods and it's doing just fine. And then you can slide it in and out without having to have these be sliding shelves. Really easy way to see exactly what you have in the back of your cabinets. I really love this specific piece. It comes in a set of three. These can be taken out and used however you'd like, but they also stack right on top. And normally I have up here baby potatoes. Just happen to be out, so I pop those up there. But it holds a lot, and then I can see exactly how much I have of each kind of potato in order to restock. I do have a variety of different size bins, just from what I had. I don't always have the long ones, but the long ones are more user-friendly. And then these are really fantastic. They're originally supposed to be for pop containers, but I use them for my canned goods, and then they roll down, and I can see exactly how much I'm out of stock. And then for these lower shelves, these bins also work fantastic. But for the lowest, I installed an aftermarket slide out tray because that one was too low for these to feel practical to me. And this was a great solution. Now I can pull it out, we can see what we need, and we pop it back in. Now let's talk about this side of the kitchen. I do have one cabinet that I did customize with the cabinet maker that I'm so glad that I did. It's my favorite cabinet. It's fantastic, let me show you. This is our cabinet for spices and oils and it has three levels. The first is spices, which you can, you can buy these racks. Don't let anybody tell you you can't. I'm gonna link them in the description for you. But there also, it has a second pull out that's just a drawer. And then the bottom, it has room for all of your oils and larger items. So I mean, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bottles of oil, large honey, lots of salt, all my salts, apparently I like salt, baking soda, all of the things fit right in here. And then this drawer, I actually haven't organized too much. I've just kind of plopped things in there, but it works just fine. And the spices are all very visible and wonderful. 
Now, like I said, you can find these inserts and I will link them for you in the description and they can fit into any drawer. It does not have to be a custom depth as well. And this is my favorite kitchen cabinet. Looks like we have a little visitor. Shall we talk about water bottle storage? Tell me what human being needs this big of a water bottle. It is bigger than my head. I tell you what, my husband brought this home and I said to him, what are you doing to me? We have two kids in sports, my husband is very active, I pretend to be, and so we have a lot of water bottles that are big and bulky and the absolute worst to store. So I literally designed the kitchen so that I would have a full drawer for water bottles. But I didn't design any customization, instead I'm using these. Look at her. These are the organizational tool that is the absolute best for basically all of my drawers. It is a spring-loaded drawer divider. There are two different sizes. This one is the large, and you simply tuck and place wherever you want in whatever size you need. And now all of these are tall enough that they don't hit when I close it. They can stand up. These ones are too tall for me to close, so I lay them flat, and everything is visible. I can see exactly what I have, and it's magic. I've had these for probably six years. They're really basic, super shallow, and they fit kitchen utensils really nicely. But this is the really nice organizer that I like for this kind of a drawer where these boxes could get overwhelming pretty quickly. This one fits your gallon bag, snack size, sandwich, even though these are actually, I got quart in here. I'm a rule breaker. And then I've got my beeswax wraps right here. So this thing worth the money. I know that there are similar ones like this that organize these types of things, but I just, I didn't do it. And I think it works great. And just so you don't think that every drawer is organized, I also have drawers that look like that. And you know what? It's fine. We don't need to be perfect here. Here's another great example of the use of these drawer dividers. Again, perfectly fit to whatever size you need. Really easy to install and they stay put so you can adjust them to whatever size. I used these instead of, I'm sure you've seen the drawer dowels. I found in my last house, I actually had the drawer dowels, but they took up more space than they were worth. And so these drawer organizers are a much better solution in my opinion. Now, don't ask me why we have an obscene amount of crazy straws. I think it was a stocking stuffer one year. They're okay, they're just sitting here chilling. But this specific utensil organizer, I really like. These sides are adjustable, so if I took this out, I could actually extend it this way. And um, it has a spot for all of your sharp knives so that the blades are pointed down and lots of space for all of your crazy things that you may have in your home. Now everybody has a junk drawer, right? It's not just me, I actually have two. I have two junk drawers and they are functional junk drawers because I have these little teeny bins. There's this size, there's this size, there's two bigger sizes than this, but they're all in my drawer. So let me show you how I use them. Now I know from far away, these just look like your standard junk drawer where everything is just piled in, but they're actually not. They are organized gift cards, sticky notes, um, all of my fabric stuff, I'm not a sewer, so this literally contains all of my fabric stuff. And so on. So as you can see, everything has a spot, everything has a place, and it does actually stay much more organized than if it were all just thrown in here. Now I had quite a few requests to see how this coffee hutch, appliance hutch, appliance garage, whatever you wanna call it, you, works, how it works. It's really simple. You just lift it up, it's on hinges that elevate it and hold it in place. And then all of our stuff is right inside. Now, this little doohickey, that's my favorite organizational 
portion of the coffee hutch because otherwise I'm pulling this out and it's going and then I spill coffee everywhere. So it's a nice little slider, which would work great if you have it underneath of an upper cabinet as well. And then everything else is really basic, a really small microwave and a four slice toaster. And that's all we got. That's all we got in there. And then you just do this and it's closed. We have cups, mugs, glasses, and the rogue water bottle. Somebody didn't know where this goes. Now in here, one thing that I am doing is installing a mat so that any water that drips off of cups or mugs after being put away from the dishwasher doesn't impact the wood negatively. And that is a really easy and great solution. If you always have a hand towel draped across your sink or just thrown onto the counter, I know, Ellie moaned at just the right time. This is your new favorite best friend for your kitchen towel situation. I've had these towels for years and years. I've probably used only exclusively these as hand towels in the kitchen, besides the pretty ones, since 2018. And the hook goes through the wash, you don't remove it, it's sewn on there and it just is perfect to hang on a knob or on a pull, and it's readily available all the time without being sloppy on your counter. One thing I like to do is just kind of make fresh fruits in a display of some kind, pretty tray, basket, whatever. If it looks pretty and they're all corralled, then it doesn't look chaotic. Same thing for garlic, onions, things like that. If you didn't know, here's today's tip that you didn't expect on today's organizational video. If you get green onions from the store and you chop them down, use up what you want, just put those roots right into some water and they will continue to grow. Work surface by the stove is really basic. I have a vintage basket for my onions. This knife block is really, really actually quite nice because of how compact it is and the knives don't have to have any kind of specific location. They just go into these little things. I don't even know what they are, like bristles. And then it stands real nice. And down here, I just use a vintage crock to corral my most used utensils, which seems to be a lot, but I actually do use them all. And then my salt canisters, are my favorite little pretty things to have on the counter that I use every day for baking. I like to throw in a couple of useless vintage items. They have no purpose, they're just pretty. Could use it if I wanted to, but I don't. This is a nice marble spoon rest. Basic things like this, just elevated with marble or with some kind of pretty stone can go a long way in making a functional item look really nice. Things like decanting your oils, butter dishes, whatnot. This little gem, Wait till you see what this does. If you are like me and you do your recipes from a phone, but that's always sitting on the counter like this, here is your new best friend. And it's pretty to stay on the counter even when you're not using it. Now in the island, this cabinet holds my, what's it called? My mixer. It's not KitchenAid, because I am cheaper than that. But I thought long and hard about the customization that I've seen in multiple kitchens where the KitchenAid just like, and then it's floating in the air for you to use. And I just decided not to do it to save some money. And now I get a workout every time I pull it out and it's just fine. It works, works just fine. Now, one thing, ooh, she's dirty. One thing, hiding it, that I really am happy with, it wasn't necessarily intentional, 
in the designing stage, but it was intentional in the moving in stage, is where I place the dishwasher in relationship to where all of our dishes get put away. So the dishwasher is here, and this drawer is where all of our plates, bowls, things of that nature go. This drawer is where all of the silverware goes, and these are where all of the glasses go, pots and pans right here. So basically almost, besides some baking things, almost everything that would come out of a dishwasher is right here to right here or right there. And that makes unloading the dishwasher so much easier. It's not really an organizational tip, but if you're doing a remodel, consider those kinds of things when you're in the moving in process or even when you're designing your cabinetry. If you are designing very specific types of cabinetry for very specific things, Think about where they are in relationship to your sink and your dishwasher. Now under the sink, I just have one simple pull out. You can't even see it. Let me, let me change that. This holds all the kind of like random things that I don't use very frequently. And it also has a spot for smaller items up top, a little grub brush to get in those crevices. And then the rest of it is just, it's just in there and it works great. Down here we have a two bin trash can. Should have taken that out first. And then we just have simple drawers. This one, I did a simple customization for a paper towel roll holder, which you can do DIY style. Just look at this. All it is is blocking put on either side with a hole cut out to the dimension of your rod. Oh look. There we are. This one is a little fancy. Um, I didn't expect this. Our cabinet maker added this on. It's their little customization. It has a tension in there so that when you put it in, it goes in the hole and then it has tension to hold it in place. You don't even need that. You can just do a cut right here that is the size of your dowel all the way down so that it slides down and then slides back up. Totally up to you, totally DIYable. Next to the stove, I use those same bins for easy access to all of my pot holders. And then I just have these easily to pull out. And you can grab these wire tray dividers just about anywhere. I'll link them in the description so that you can easily organize your cutting boards and your different cooling racks, pans, anything that's thin and can easily fit inside of a cabinet. unexpected organization slash cleaning tip for you. If you are anything like my family, there are about five cups per day that each family member decides to use brand new from the cupboard. That is excessive. So I found this tip from Cami at Tidbits Blog. Get yourself a simple silicone wristband. They're literally the ones you would normally wear on your wrist that brands put their marketing onto. I'll link them in the description and you pop it on your cup. I'm white today. Addie can be purple, Aaron can be blue. I just leave them on the cups. They go through the dishwasher, they're silicone, they're allowed to, and there is no problem. Also great for when you have guests over and you don't want to have to Sharpie on some red Solo cups. Glass cups, colored band, everybody knows whose cup is theirs. And those are the basics of my non-custom organized custom kitchen. There are so many aftermarket items that you can find to create a customized kitchen. If you have a standard kitchen, if your kitchen doesn't have any customizations, or if you want to add something specific that you may have overlooked when you designed your kitchen the first time. One kind of overarching design rule that I have found to be true in my own home, I'm sure you found this to be true, is that if you have assigned something a purpose, for instance, our water bottle drawer, and you have put parameters in place for how things are to be placed in it, it'll stay organized. Do I sometimes have to go through because the kids toss them in? Sure. 
that's just part of life. But for the most part, if you have designated a purpose and you've put parameters in place, it'll stay organized. And you'll have to maybe train your family a little bit, let's be honest, but that's okay. That's teaching them how to create an organized home for when they grow up and they have their own as well. Thanks so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. All of the links to all the organizational aftermarket items that I installed in my kitchen are in the description for your shopping convenience. Now, these are just things that have worked for me, for the way our family live. There are millions, that might be an exaggeration, of different ways to organize a kitchen, to organize a home, but hopefully these ideas spark something that might be helpful for you. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know in the comments what other design elements of the kitchen you might want to learn about, and I will try to address that in an upcoming video. I wanna take some time and flush out that side of it because I haven't talked much about the design of the kitchen and why I made specific choices. For instance, like my pitiful fridge. <laughs> I'll see you guys next time.